Going by the Bible, Abel had the distinction of being the world's first shepherd. He tended to the sheep and other livestock, while his older brother Cain worked the fields to raise crops. For centuries, within family structures, younger brothers often served as shepherds. Remember that the future King David was left out in the fields to tend to his father's sheep while his older brothers were presented to Israel's leader, Samuel. Younger brothers were unlikely to inherit any wealth or title from their fathers. So to earn their keep, many of them took on the dangerous hard work of shepherding. While the technology of most all occupations has changed drastically through the centuries, the essential functions of shepherds remains the same today. Feeding, protecting, caring for wounds and illnesses, providing firm guidance, and keeping the flock together. According to an October 2023 story in the Brussels Times of Belgium, shepherds are still in demand around the world. It can be a lonely life with high rates of alcoholism and turnover. The average tenure of a shepherd today is about five years, the story said. It's not exactly the idyllic life as portrayed in various works of art. The genre known as pastoral in paintings, poems, stories, and music extol the virtues of living outside in the country, far from urban worries and troubles. It's the simple life versus complicated living. I'm guessing few of those writers or painters ever made their living tending to flocks of sheep and goats. The job apparently was dangerous from the beginning. Abel found that out the hard way via his own brother. And I guess ever since the farmers and the ranchers have been at odds. Well, at the very least in Oklahoma. Shepherds are the prominent feature of our Old and New Testament readings for today. Jesus declares he is the good shepherd, while Ezekiel decries the false shepherds of God's people Israel. While shepherding is still a profession today, it doesn't represent as large a percentage of the workforce as it used to, especially compared to the eras of Ezekiel and Jesus. Yet most certainly in the context of those readings, we still have shepherds over people, although they go by different titles nowadays. Some of these shepherds are good, and some are bad. How do we know the difference? That's a topic we'll attempt to explore later on today when we discuss the good, the bad, and the holy. Don't make us use our crook to get you to watch. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, and welcome to the online worship service of Robinson Memorial Presbyterian Church in Gastonia, North Carolina, for Sunday, April 21st, 2024. We've had near record high temperatures this past week around here. And if you believe the forecast earlier in the week, today is supposed to be rainy. Well, whether it's sunny, cloudy, or stormy, we thank you for tuning in today. 
Wednesday Bible study continues to be going well. However, not this upcoming week. We'll be taking off this last Wednesday of the month, but never fear, we'll be back on May 1st, 2 p.m. in Fellowship Hall. We have some new electronic candles in our sanctuary, thanks to Elder Doug Alt. These even come with a remote. Ooh, thanks, Doug. Now it's time to get this service started with our responsive call to worship. You'll find the words on your screen. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. You spread a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us worship God. Well, our task right now is to worship. Our opening hymn for today is titled, We Have Come Into His House. Please join in singing as Ashley provides the music. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about this promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. With this in mind, let us confess our sins before God. Shepherd of all, by laying down your life for your flock, you reveal your love for all. We confess that we are timid when it comes to our role in protecting your people. We think first of ourselves and our loved ones, having scant time to think about those without food, water, or a roof over their heads, or medicine for the day. Sharpen our senses, so that, like a shepherd, we can better detect dangers facing others, and act according to your will. Lead us from the place of death to the place of abundant life, that guide it by your care for us, we may rightly offer our lives in love for you and our neighbors. And all God's people said, Amen. For while we were still weak, 
at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. This proves God's love for us. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by His blood, will we be saved through Him from the wrath of God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. The 24th Psalm begins with these words. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. All we have is a blessing from God. Thank you for your generous support of the ministries and missions of our church. If you are not a regular financial contributor, we invite you to help us continue these services through your gifts, tithes, and offerings. At the end of this online service, you will see on screen our mailing address, website address, and a QR code you can use to make your contributions. Donations of any size are appreciated. Now, let us dedicate your offerings to the service of our Lord. Let us pray. Source of healing, bringer of wholeness. You enter the world and cause the light to shine, the lame to walk, the sins of all to be forgiven. Whatever we bring you is a gift of your graciousness. All that we offer, you have poured out upon us. Use us and mold us to conform to your will for all people. Take our talents and apply them to spread the truth of your love. your name we pray. Amen. Today's Gospel reading comes to us from John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Listen now to the word of our Lord. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, He abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me, And I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one 
flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Our hymn of preparation is based on the ideas found in the 23rd Psalm. Please join in singing, The King of Love My Shepherd Is. Our Old Testament reading comes to us from Ezekiel, chapter 34, verses 1 through 12. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to you, shepherds! of Israel, who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So they were scattered because there was no shepherd. And when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals. My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth and no one searched or looked for them. Therefore, you shepherds, 
hear the word of the Lord. As surely as I live, declares the sovereign Lord, because my flock lacks a shepherd and so has been plundered, and has become food for all the wild animals. And because my shepherds did not search for my flock, but cared for themselves rather than for my flock, therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against the shepherds, and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths, and it will no longer be food for them. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on a day of clouds and darkness. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. With some movie theme music, all you need is to hear just a few notes to trigger recognition. Just hearing that much, I instantly think of the 1966 spaghetti western, The Good, The Bad, and the ugly. Clint Eastwood as the good, Lee Van Cleef as the bad, and Eli Wallach as the ugly. I think in reality, all three of the characters were mixtures in various proportions of good, bad, and ugly. Sometimes the line between those descriptions can be mighty thin. And other times, it is very clear. The title of today's sermon, The Good, the Bad, and the Holy, is obviously a play on the title of the movie. But it also reminds me of the contrast found in today's reading from the Gospel of John in the book of Ezekiel. Good shepherds, bad shepherds, sheep. In the context of these passages, we are the sheep. For some, being called sheep is an insult. Who wants to be a defenseless lamb dependent on others? Some folks get rather ugly if labeled as sheep. Yet, we are sheep. However, you ready for this? We are also called to be shepherds. That doesn't seem to be particularly logical, does it? Being both sheep and shepherd? But we are talking about faith, not logic. In our gospel reading, Jesus identifies himself as the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. This is who I am. I am not a hired hand. My sheep, us, know me. This is in stark contrast to our passage from Ezekiel where he condemns the actions, or in some cases, lack of of actions on the part of those who have been designated as shepherds of Israel, of God's own people. So, the good, the bad, what about the holy? Stay tuned.
the good. A central part of the Jewish festival of Passover involved the sacrificial lamb or the paschal lamb. One-year-old lambs without defects were required by God for the Passover meal on the night when the angel of death passed through Egypt. The lamb blood was splashed on the door frames of each Jewish household, protecting occupants from the slaughter. In Christian traditions, we talk about the Paschal mystery. It refers to the entire Easter story of suffering, death, and resurrection. The how and why of the story is still a mystery, even if the what is well known to us. Christ, who was sacrificed for us on a blood-stained cross, is referred to in several places as the Paschal Lamb. His life, His blood, saves us from death. Similar to those Passover lambs that saved the Jewish firstborns in Egypt. Jesus as a lamb. At the same time, He is a shepherd. Not just any old shepherd, but the good shepherd. That's not, by the way, a comparative term as opposed to an average or a poor shepherd. Jesus is taking on a title that would have been understood by those who heard his words. Beyond today's passage from Ezekiel chapter 34, God made it clear he was fed up with the shepherds over his people. And he was none too pleased with many of the sheep as well. So God declares, I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. King David was long dead by the time of this declaration. God was referring to the one who is still to come, the Messiah. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lie, lays down his life for his sheep. Jesus is God's servant, David. He will do all that God promised to shepherd the people. But he will also lay down his life as a lamb to protect God's flock. The good. The bad. Ezekiel was a priest at the time of the Babylonian invasion and captivity. In the 13th year of being an exile in Babylon, God began showing him visions to be shared with his fellow captives. He foretold the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem and made it known why things turned so ugly for Judah and the people of God. His oracles blame both sheep and shepherd, but mostly the shepherds. This was a reference to the leaders of Judah, both civil and religious. They had been given the solemn task of caring for God's people. But instead, Ezekiel reveals, they were interested in caring only for themselves, ignoring the flocks. You eat the curds, Clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals. But you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays or searched for the lost. 
you have ruled them harshly and brutally. The rulers over Judah failed in every way imaginable as shepherds. They were hired hands with no personal attachment to the sheep other than what they could profit from them. So God declares he will remove them as shepherds. Then how will they survive without the flocks? How will they eat without easy access to the mutton? Leaders cease to be leaders when there's no one following them. At the beginning of the service, we talked about the word pastoral and how it referred to the supposed ideal life of shepherds and country folk. But you are probably aware of another use of the word pastoral. The spiritual care and concern provided to a church by its pastor. It comes from the idea of the humble shepherd, charged by God to tend to his flock, to keep it safe and fed. Certainly, there are good pastors, run-of-the-mill pastors, and yes, bad pastors. How do you know the difference? The answer is in chapter 34 of Ezekiel. It provides the definition of the bad. The holy. To be clear, the word holy does not appear once in either our Gospel or Old Testament readings for today. Yet, it is the word that ties these passages to us. Now, I will confess to you that initially the reason for using holy in the title of today's sermon was that it rhymes with ugly, kind of. It opened the door for me to use the good, the bad, and the holy as the title for today's sermon. But you know the Holy Spirit can take crazy ideas brewing in our minds and use them for important messages. What do we mean by the word holy? We say that God is holy, that Jesus is holy, that the third part of the triune God, the Spirit, is holy. It's in the title. The Bible is holy. Many are wed in holy matrimony. Relics and objects can be holy. Churches are thought to be holy places. People can be holy. But what does that mean? Are we holy? Certainly anyone who has faith in God through Jesus is indeed holy. That is, set apart for God. Set apart for God. Being holy does not bestow moral superiority or sinlessness in a person. And holiness is not something we can obtain for ourselves. Holiness comes from Christ, from the Good Shepherd who separates us, calling us to live in the world, but not be of the world. Being holy means a willingness to forego the comforts of our own lives to help others, even to the point of risking death. Being holy means, like Jesus, to be willing to stand against wrong without harming others, to put the needs and well-being of other human beings before conventional morals or laws. Healing on the Sabbath, for instance, as Jesus did. Prioritizing people over the rules. As we each 
are made holy. We are each called to be shepherds. Even while we are sheep of Christ's flock, Jesus showed us how to be obedient lambs and good shepherds. How to be true to God's vision for the world. How to live into being made holy. You see, each of us is a shepherd. We can choose to be good or bad in the job. But being good requires being like Jesus, the holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now let us turn our hearts and minds to the Lord in prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for Jesus, who brought hope to the distressed, promise to the despairing, and healing to the afflicted. In him, there is the gift of life eternal to all who believe. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, who calls us to labor. Let love lead us to be more forgiving and discipline us to be a reconciling force in the world. When enemies taunt us, assure us of your presence as we seek patience and inner strength. Amid tensions caused by misunderstanding, suspicion, or lack of trust, send your spirit of insight and hope. Help us make the first move toward those we have offended, forsaking our pride in seeking peace. Let love lead us to be more daring. Give us the boldness to speak out on behalf of the voiceless. Fill us with the confidence that you will not desert us the assurance that what we do is in accord with your will. Gracious Lord, we offer our prayers today for Rhonda, for Chuck Callahan, and for Darla and Jerry. Our prayers go out for Debbie Palmer, Ray, and Michael Palmer. Our prayers continue for Buster and Corinne. For Debbie and Bobby, Adrian, Doug, and Ashley. For Jim Mole and for David Stanley and Debbie Stanley. We pray for Pat Button and for Bruce and Joyce. For Ashley, for Stephen and Jennifer and Larry. For Beverly Smith. We pray for Lorraine Miller and for Barbara Plyler. For Judy and TC. For Penny and Vicki. For Susie and Jody. For Mac. For Joyce Bell and Rick, for Terry and Alan, for Mitchell and Tiffany, Lorraine and Michaela. We pray for Marilyn and Johnny Frazier, for Kay and for Linda, for Claudette and Morgan, for Barbara Moses and Henry, for Gary, Nancy Denton, J.C. McCarter, Larry Copeland. Nancy Bright, for Rick and Renee and Michelle Wright, for Charles Lowe and Tracy Hoyle, for Glenda Hardy and Keith and Vicki Quinn, for R.B. Jenkins, for Kim's mother, for Wade Brandon and for Robert and Ruth Lester. God of all power, you called from death our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. Send us as shepherds to rescue the lost, to heal the injured, and to feed one another with knowledge and understanding. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters in Christ, let us share with the world what it is we believe by reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you'll find on your screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our closing hymn today reminds us, take the name of Jesus with you. Please, sing along. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. 
Thank you for joining us today in worship at Robinson Memorial Presbyterian. If you have enjoyed this service or were inspired by it, we have a favor to ask. Well, actually a few favors. First, hit the like or thumbs up button for this video. Second, write and post a comment on the service. That really does help the YouTube and Facebook algorithms that apparently rule over the internet. Third, take time to share the video. That's what a good shepherd would do. You are welcome to join us in person to worship each Sunday at 11 a.m. in our sanctuary. But if not, we'll be right here online as of noon each Sunday. May the God of peace who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good so that you may do God's will, seeking that which is pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.